vectors are used to describe a quantity with a direction. As we cover physics, you will see many physical quantities with a sense of direction. That is, when you change direction, maybe rotate around a little, the sense of the quantity changes. There are quantities without a sense of direction. We call them scalars. And you can represent them with just numbers. Some examples of scalars you might know are properties such as temperature and volume. But soon, you will see vector quantities. Displacement, velocity, acceleration, and force to start. A vector as a mathematical quantity is best described as an arrow. With this arrow, I can change its length, I can change its direction, or I can change both. Note how to describe this vector in two dimensions, I need two numbers. These two numbers can be its length, 33.8, and its direction, 34.2 degrees from the horizontal. And this is very intuitive in our description of vectors as geometric quantities. But we will soon find that this way of describing vectors can be very limiting. And we are going to want to describe vectors by its components. Sometimes we say we are breaking vector into its component. When we describe a vector by its two independent components. This illustrates a vector with its components. We call them components because by adding them together, we can get the whole vector. So how do you add vectors, arrows? It's easiest if you think of these vectors as representing a kind of a change. So imagine this first vector as representing a change taking you from some starting place to this place. And let's say you have a second vector, which represents a different kind of change that takes you from one place to another place. Then to add these two vectors means you apply this change first, and from the place where you ended, you apply the second change. Sometimes this is called a head to tail method because of what it looks like. You are putting head of the arrow to tail of the next arrow. And the overall effect of these two one after another changes is that you have a total change that takes you all the way from the initial starting place to the final ending place. So this vector is the sum of these two vectors here. And this vector has been represented in a special way. The two vectors that add up to this whole vector, they are in two perpendicular directions. This vector here is parallel to the x-axis, and this vector here is parallel to the y-axis. And you can see that adding this vector that's parallel to x-axis to the vector that's parallel to the y-axis gives you this whole vector here. So this is the x component. And you can see in the number here that it has length of 28. This vector is its y component. And you can see here that it has a length of 19. And when you look at the whole vector, it has the component x component of 28 and y component of 19. And these vector additions, you can swap the orders. And you see that you get the same result if you add these two arrows in any order. And actually, you can use the component display here to show how those vector components appear. So this is one style of representing components. And this makes it clear as to how this whole vector is broken into two x and y components. 
this is another way of representing it. It shows more clearly that the x component plus y component gives you this whole vector. So for a good while in this class, as we go through kinematics and dynamics, we will work with the vectors by working with their components. And as you look at this right triangle, I'm hoping you will be reminded of your trigonometry, how to represent this hypotenuse in terms of the length of the legs, and how to get this angle here if you know some of the sides of this right triangle. You will have some homework problems that will give you some practice on switching between these two representations of the length and direction or by components. Until next time, bye.